Hi everyone, welcome <laughs> to this episode of the For Real podcast. On the podcast, we talk about what we experience whilst we're practicing and teaching Kung Fu and Tai Chi and how it benefits our lives and the three parts that make us whole, the mind, body and the spirit. Here next to me is Sivu Guensu, master and founder of Jingmo Academy and also known as Mi Faja. Faja. My name is Jung Su. I'm an instructor here, senior instructor at the Jingmo Academy. And whilst you're listening and have any questions and wonderings that you want to have discussed on the podcast, you can send them through to our email, email address. I'm going to leave that in because that was funny. <laughs> email address, forreal at jingmo.com.au, F-U-R-E-E-L at G-I-N-G-M-O dot com dot A-U. Intro. Okay. All right. Hello, Dad. Hi, John. Hi, Mike. <laughs> so, um, before we get into the questions and wonderings from peeps, any noticings from the week's training that you want to share in the podcast? Noticings? Um, yeah, I'm really tired. Mm. I just notice how, how like I am editing student videos at night and... A couple, few weeks ago, as I'm editing, I can feel how tired I was. And if I stopped editing and, say, like, did a, a download before an upload, I'd fall asleep. But now, like last night, I'm editing yeah. and I'm I'm actually in an edit and <laughs> my eyes shut. <laughs> I fall asleep. And I, w- I woke up and last night when I'm uh, – I thought I'd finished this video yeah. and I'm uploading it to our – closed Facebook messenger group and I'm thinking hang on that video it's the same name as the other video complete (laughs) and I hadn't finished editing it I even used the name of the wrong student and uh, I put Marty's name on when it should have been Oz I didn't edit the front of the video oh it was crazy I actually thought I had I I must have fallen asleep quite a few times last night awesome (laughs) Just tired. Week 93. Yeah. Tired. Week 93 and getting close to Christmas as well. Yeah. I'm knackered as well. Mm. Change of season. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Hot, cold, hot, cold. Cold, cold, Mm. hot, hot, cold. (laughs) Yeah. My my eyes are closing now. I'm tired too. It's not just because you're Asian. No. I was was born like this. (laughs) Racist. Uh, um, but yeah, I'm also knackered. Yeah, I find by um, by the time I get to bed, put my head on the pillow, I'm out in mm. seconds. Mm. So tired. Mm. Training, um, I know we both do with daily practice, so mm. the body's resting and stuff. But got some new shoes, got ah. some new comfy shoes that cool. you've got us also. But um, well, not the same time. No, but mm. I got them after you mm. from your suggestion, and I've been wearing them at the moment. They feel yep. pretty good. There you go, huh? Guys, it feels great. Pillows on my feet. Isn't that amazing? So far. Like, so after far. so many decades, we've discovered we've been wearing the copies. Yeah, yeah. The, the copy fair use. Yes. They weren't, they're not even called fair use. They're called... Like fair longs. Feet, yeah. Fair long. What is yours? But even my white ones are called, like, it has the... the, the f- f- the fish bit fish and bit. has the, li- has the yeah. line bit on the end so it's like yeah. f- 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 flying fish yeah. Yeah. fair you fair supposed to be flying fish yeah and I'd, I I actually thought we were always wearing the originals because we bought them at the Shaolin Temple and stuff <laughs> <the God>. <laughs> do you remember that time we were in France and we saw them yeah. for like 140 euros yeah and we thought oh, that's rubbish How that's can, crazy that's, that's, that's a rip off yeah but they were the, they're the originals. Yeah. yeah, they're the original ones. The original brand. Wow. That's but now, cool. internet. Yep. Easy. We got the... In- Three week. weeks shipping. Yep. It's pretty good. That's cool. Um, for those who do Tai Chi, it's like I'm literally doing cloud hands. All the time. All the time. Wow. Because my feet are on clouds. And for those who are watching, you'll be able to see him open his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Racist, man. Racist. Uh. Um... But yeah, I'm looking forward to practice with these shoes. I haven't mm-hmm. practiced yet, I've just worn them casually. Mm-hmm. But yeah, anything else from practicing, noticing? Nothing. No. Counting down to 100 weeks. Or counting up. Oh yeah, counting up to 100 weeks. True. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, counting up to 100 weeks. Hmm. 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 
lots of mixed emotions this last couple of weeks this week in particular mixed emotions being just being aware of um the pressure that is looming to have it's it's almost like christmas and new year we have this cultural reflection like it's in our culture to reflect and to see how uh, well you did how well we did yeah. and i can actually feel the pressure like uh, the measuring of oh d- you know do i live in a house that's as good as them or do i drive a car as good as theirs and are we going to have a holiday that's going to sound as cool as those people and yeah all that stuff it's amazing and and gifts wow jeez the amount of pressure like Marianne asked me, what do you want for Christmas? And I said, well, honestly, nothing. Yeah. Like, honestly, there's nothing. Oh, a new pair of winter pajamas and some socks, but because I keep wearing the holes out of my, the heels of my socks. But really, apart from that, it's like absolutely nothing. But then there's the pressure of, all right, so we're going to Jim and Teens for um, Christmas. Shouldn't we have something for ourselves? Mm. Like, you know, obviously we'll, we'll get stuff for others, but. What does it mean if we don't get each other something? Would people frown upon that? And so it's crazy. It's an, the amount of pressure is is ridiculous. And so I I feel for and like I consider myself in a living a blessed life. Sure, we don't own the house we live in, and cars not brand new, and you know we don't have all the things we want, but we have everything that we need. What about the people who don't actually have what they need? Mm. What's happening there? Yeah. You know? So Christmas comes along and then there's all of this, the frenzy that goes on out there with starting to get emails now about the Black Friday sale. <clears throat> Seeing Tony was saying that he's called into work at Australia Post over time now for the next two Saturdays. So he has to leave early um, Saturday morning straight after Tai Chi. Because they're expecting lots of parcels. So what about people that don't have? How crappy is that? Mm. Like it's already, it's pressure for, well, I'll speak for me, it's already pressure for me and I, I live a blessed life. What about those who live a really tough life where it's not enough and then there's all of this, everyone's out there doing this thing and like it doesn't matter where you look, there's the retail, consumer expectation that comes along with Christmas mm. and then everyone's saving up for New Year sales and then the stories in the news are obviously going to be people lining up the night before New Year sale and they'll show it on the news people rushing into the big department stores as the gates are opening it's pretty crap really mm. you know I, I just think that, like that and I know there's probably people out there going well you know that's their own thing and some people would say they got themselves there, so they got to deal with it. But it doesn't make it any easier. Yeah. Just because, or whatever circumstance, doesn't make it any easier. Yep. It's pretty crap. Okay. I'm fine. I'm, I'm just noticing the mixed emotions. You asked me about what. What am I noticing? I'm noticing the mixed emotions as we're getting closer to the Christmas New Year thing. Sure. Mm. Okay. What about you? Uh, yeah. Well, got new shoes and tired from practice that's mm. what i'm noticing no oh. like i said before oh, yeah. <laughs> if you were listening dad <laughs> like what's up with uh, you man what, what, like where, look where, at you where looking at me like where are you, where are you man where are you, where are you listening okay so question of wonderings from michael uh who has sent it through so he says after kung fu on a particular night he did some yearlies at home after when he got home and it was the best year loose he's ever done. Mm. And he often has this obs- observation when he does year loose after Kung Fu mm. on a weeknight. Mm. And um, he says that Sifu often talks about the two types of exercise, depleting and rejuvenating, mm. um, where Kung Fu falls into depleting category when it makes the person lose their breath and, mm. and has high impact conditioning like Toy Sao. Mm. Um, but he says, but I find that the resistance from Jong's pad works and weaponry gets my body pumped to be able to move better and more freely afterwards than when I end a session of Tai Chi. Mm. So my question is in two parts. Mm. Part one, mm. if Kung Fu is depleting and Tai Chi is rejuvenating, why would the order on Saturday morning be Tai Chi first and then Kung Fu? 
wouldn't it make sense to do the rejuvenating exercise um, to be done last mm. <coughs> part two? Mm. Why do do I feel so knackered after a session of Saturday morning Tai Chi and so pumped after a weeknight session of Kung Fu? I feel like the Kung Fu is rejuvenating for me. Does anyone else see? Does anyone else feel similar? And can be dis- and can this be dis- discussed on the podcast? Mm. Cool. Well, I, I can't speak for anyone else, but yeah. Um, first of all, um, depleting and rejuvenating is like yin yang, mm-hmm. and inside of one exercise, there's always a bit of the other. Yes. So kung fu is not completely depleting. Mm. We can practice it so that it is rejuvenating. Yeah. And vice versa. The second thing is that the depletion and rejuvenation is not about how I feel afterwards, but it's actually about our chi. So in the chi energy may sometimes influence how we're feeling, but doesn't necessarily have to. So rejuvenating our chi is giving our body back energy. doesn't mean I don't feel tired. So if, to really simply put, when my chi is balanced and flowing best, my body is completely attuned to what it needs. So if my, for example... Just because I practice an exercise that stimulates my energy levels, I'm not talking about chi, doesn't mean that it's rejuvenating. Because if my body is completely exhausted and needs to rest, but my emotional state and chemical state has been aroused, then I don't get to sleep. So it's done the, it's done the opposite. It hasn't allowed me to do what I need to do. It's just... Um, like sparked it like drinking a can of coke or having a coffee mm. it's lifted it yep. superficially and artificially so I think uh, where Michael where Michael's misunderstood the words rejuvenating and depleting he's made it mean that's how he feels after training but in actual fact it's referring to the chi flow in the body which supposed to be giving us uh, a better reading and understanding of what the body requires, what it needs. Like, I'm ignoring it because I've got work that I'm doing and I'm going through the videos mm. and I'm tired. Yeah. I'm falling asleep. I should actually go to bed. Yeah. But I know it. doesn't mean that I'm doing necessarily doing myself any harm. Yeah. But I actually know that that's what my body needs. Yeah. So the very, the, the absolute very next moment where I can get to sleep, that's what I'm doing. Mm. I'm going to bed. But I know I have 10 or 12 videos to do first, so that's what I'll do. Um, Now, as for how he feels after class, uh, well, actually, the first question was, why is it Tai Chi first and then Kung Fu after? Well, that's that's assuming what he's saying is true, which already we've worked out that it's that that's not what rejuvenating and depleting is referring to. And the second thing is not everybody trains two sessions in a row. Yeah. Um, and he's probably one of very few who do that. Uh, the the line dance team and the demo team will do it as well. Yeah. And then there's a handful of Kung Fu people, like Sing Tony as well, that would train the second session immediately after Tai Chi. Um, it doesn't, it's, it's not a, uh, there's no set order. They both have their place, and it doesn't mean that one has to happen before the other. It's just, it's a, it's just the way it is. Mm. Like you choose to do whichever one you want to do, and if you want to do both, you do both. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um. Second part of the question: mm. Why does why do I feel so knackered after a session of Tai Chi and so pumped after a week night session of Kung Fu? Do you feel that way? Uh, no. How do you how do you feel? Um, I feel like I've gone to a point now where I can get the similar feeling in training both, mm. depending on what I need. Just because I do it every day, and mm. every day has its ups and downs, and mm. I train a specific way according to how I'm feeling. Mm. So some days I might be really energized, totally mm. full of energy. So I'll do specific. My might it might be a Tai Chi day, so I'll do my Tai Chi's really. Mm. fast and get my heart rate up mm. or it might be a good full day where i explode more on my uh, hand drills and stuff like that but it might be a day that like today i'm really tired and knackered mm. 
but I do things a little bit slower with more intent and more focusing on the structure and slowing it down a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I don't ha- I feel the same mm. for both. Mm. I reckon. Mm. Yeah, I I don't know why he would f- why he feels uh, different yeah. with either. Um, could be a like a time of day thing as well. Could be. It could be a time of day thing, but it also or time of week. You know, there's there's lots of factors. Like yeah. Mind, body, spirit. There's three there's three parts of it that are, are being affected. Yeah. Um. What I notice is that when I'm tired and I do Tai Chi, it wakes me up. Yeah. So I actually get clear because often I'm tired. Um, uh, the tired I'm talking about is actually an emotional tired. It's just from being riding the 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 roller coaster all week and feeling like I actually just need a break from um, managing this up and down thing. So you feel tired because I feel tired because the emotions are intense and you just want to shut them down. So the yep. easiest way to shut down is just to go to sleep. Um, and in those moments when I practice my yilus, what ends up happening is that I get clear and then the tiredness disappears. So I'm not stimulated. I don't feel as though I'm awake. But what happens is I actually process through the emotions so that I don't feel like I need to go to sleep anymore mm. to shut them down. So, you know, there's, gosh, geez, there's so many, there's so many factors. It's not, it's not as simple as black and white that if you exercise and you lose your breath, then you feel energized. It's not yeah. that. That's just one third of it. That's the body. There's still the mental self and the emotional self. And then all the combinations of stuff that's going on and whatnot. Yeah. So there's no real easy answer to Michael's question, do you mm. not think? Yeah. I um, so Relating to what you were saying, at the moment in the mornings when I practice, mm. it, with, my, um, with my coffee... I have a coffee in the morning, not eating anything yet. Then I do some practice Mm. and then I have something to eat. And that routine like really kickstarts my morning. Mm. Um, Whereas when I don't practice, Mm. which has happened more often than I do practice in my life, um, having that coffee or food still doesn't wake me up. Mm. So I find actually bursts, gives me a burst of Mm. awakeness, Mm. if that's a word. Mm. So I think, you know, it's all kind of individual as well mm. depending on the person and mm. what works best for you mm. for him mm. yeah true yeah I, it's it's not as it's not cut and dry it's not black and white it's there's so many factors yeah involved yeah but from a from a timing perspective you know we have tai chi first before kung fu only because that's the best use of our time mm. um otherwise we're standing around waiting for the next class to start and we all uh, agreed that getting our classes done and dusted by midday was a good thing so that we didn't then have to deal with the lunch break and then coming back in the early afternoon and you know and eating into the whole weekend yeah it's like let's start the weekend with our practice and our training together and get it done mm. early mm. well yeah. yeah i'd be interested to hear Jing Mo is um, coming back to this sort of section of the podcast, mm. you know, comment on our community chat group and mm. see what you guys feel when you're practicing. Fair enough, yep. Because then we can all share the experience and have a better idea. Yeah, that's right. Isn't it? Yep. All right. Well, you've got some photos there that you brought in. I do. Let's talk about these. I will post them up on Instagram. Yep. And probably scan them and put them in the video as well so they come up oh, on the idea. screen. Yeah. So we'll just talk about it and you cool. guys can refer to it via watching the uh, watching the podcast on our YouTube channel at For Real TV or um, follow me on Instagram as well, For Real Official, and they'll be up for you to see. Cool. So I thought I'd get some photos that weren't taken in Brisbane. Okay. And these were pretty much the first lot of photos taken here in Perth. Mm-hmm. The year was 1989, we had to find... Do you know that there's, in that time, I don't know, maybe now there's more, but at that time there was really only one sign in Perth that says, Welcome to Perth. 
And it's opposite Crown Casino in that park. It's not there now, is it? Yeah. Oh, well, it should Still be. There? That, that's, that's the corner. So on, on that side over here, that's Great Eastern Highway there. On oh. the right, on that side is Crown. All right. That's that park. I don't right. even know right yeah. now where's the Welcome to Perth sign, our side of Perth. Yeah. Is, uh, there, is there one? Yeah, yeah. There's Coming one in, uh, it's King's Park, isn't it? Oh, no, that says Western Australia. Yeah. It doesn't say Perth. This one says, Welcome to Perth. Yeah. That's cool. That's me wearing my leathers. Cool man. Yeah. One day you might <laughs> want to wear those leathers. It's my, it's my favorite color. So Red. Yeah. So, 89, I was 20, 24. Same age as you. Jeez. 24. A bit, t- bit timing, fitting, t- fitting to the time. Yeah. So these are the guys. Are these the armbands you gave me? Yes. Well, yeah. I, have, I have these armbands, guys. Yep. Right now. Cool, hey. So these guys here, that's Morris Castorina. Um, uh, then I think he was 15. There's, yeah, yeah, of course. Yep. Me seeing Michael Madden, who's senior instructor then, and Stephen Prella, who's who became a seeing. He was also 15. They're both. Are they fifteen? They were fifteen. Oh, maybe sixteen. I might. That might be wrong. They might be sixteen. Way older than that. No, that's it. Italian man. Italian. They're both Italians. Nice shorts, then. You like them? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got those to hand down to you. Oh no, it's all good. And there's it's all good. there's yeah yeah doing single whip. Eight. Hey. Oops, sorry. And there you go. There's like a mini on the couch with seafood sort of thing. Happening. Well, I figured that's why I brought them because I figured we haven't done one for ages, yeah. and we and now this the podcast is available on video, so mm. it's you know it's cool. People right. will be able to see them, and you've got Instagram, which we didn't have back then. When we we're doing on the couch. Yeah. Um. You check out the Perth skyline. There's a whole heap of buildings missing. Yeah. It's very There's bare. No convention centre, no QV1, yeah. no, what's that one, the other tall one? Woodside or something? Uh, no, the other one down down near the, down the terrace. Don't know. Central Park. Oh, yeah. No Central Park. None of those new ones, like the ones we're talking about in the last 10 years, what about the ones that are recently built? Mm. So the the tallest building here is the Bank West building. Yep. And like, it is tall by comparison <laughs> to everything else. Yeah. Um, and now, it's it's not, it's tiny, isn't it? By comparison to everything around oh, it. It definitely feels like the, the the sky is filled there. Yeah. More. Isn't that incredible? And these guys are still around. Oh, yeah? Seeing Steve, I think he lives on the Gold Coast. Still doing some teaching. Seeing Michael Madden lives in Brisbane. Yeah, I don't know about Morris Castorina. He became a Seeing as well. Mm-hmm. Seeing Morris. Don't know don't know what he's up to. But um he's holding our video camera. Check out the size of that video camera. Oh wow. That's camcorder, man. That's like you could use that as a weapon. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, cool. So I thought I'd bring those in. Any stories with those photos? Um stories with the photos. Well, there's lots of... St- <laughs> yes. I'll tell you one funny story. Okay. When we first came over, we we came over in a VK Commodore station wagon. Yeah. And it was white. Um, and we packed it full of stuff right to the brim. Like, you couldn't see out the back. Yeah. And there's five of us driving over. So, the one person that's not in the photo is seeing Adam Holland. Okay. Who I think lives in Melbourne now. Is he taking the photo? Uh, he might actually be taking the photo. Yeah, you're right. He might he might be the one taking a photo. Anyway, so seeing Adam came over. Um, so Morris and Steve were both um, underage at the time, so they were passengers. Yeah. But uh, we drove the three of us drove um, from Brisbane. From Brisbane. So five of us packed in the car, and we, well, I think we left at about like three in the morning or four in the morning or something like that. And we kind of worked out um, by the map, traveling at 100 kilometers an hour, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, how long it would take, where we would be. Yeah. After um, two full days of driving, right? So we wanted to start before the sun rose 
and we wanted no to GPS. Get, no GPS. GPS. We had a <laughs> map book. This is uh, hilarious, right? So we're driving through. The, there's two funny stories. The, the first one is we're driving on the first night. Um, everyone's still like hyped up on adrenaline. Yes. This exciting road trip we're on, going yeah. to Perth to start a new Malcolm Sue Kung Fu school, right? Yeah. Leaving uh, Seasook Graham and Seasook Bill behind. They're looking after the school. And um, we we got in the car and we went down through the inland, so through New South Wales, through the top of Victoria and then into South Australia. Yeah. So the first night we just kept driving because we had three of us driving. We'd sleep in the car as we yep. went. And um, on that first night we hit this big kangaroo. So I'm the passenger and seeing Michael was driving. Yeah. And I fell asleep. I shouldn't have fall. I wasn't allowed to fall asleep. Right. Right. Because the, the go was the two people in the front seats would stay awake and talk to each other and the three in the back can sleep. Yeah. So we just keep rotating like that. Yeah. I nodded off and then bang, this big loud sound and woo, swerve. And just at that moment, I opened my eyes and I could see the, the chest of this big <laughs> kangaroo. Like it was standing at my eye level, yeah. his chest and belly. Yeah. So, right. And seeing Michael said it was a big kangaroo, it was a big red. Anyway, he hopped away and <laughs> we broke. He did because he just swerved enough. He He's clipped just the front. Just kept, what's up, guys? I'm yeah, going to hop away right. now. That's right. We did. He hopped away, but luckily we only broke the indicator. Okay. And the, in the VK, there's the, the headlight and then there's the separate indicator and parking. So we broke that off and that was dangling. <laughs> and um, so we taped that back on and we kept driving. And we went to this uh, petrol station now, on the map. It looked like a town, but in actual fact, it was just a petrol station with a 12-foot barbed wire fence around the entire thing. Right. So it's like just a petrol station, dirt roads, and then this big compound around it. Yeah. And it was because people steal fuel, um. right? They would steal fuel. So he, the guy who operated the petrol station lived in the house that was attached to the the fuel the garage and... We had to beep the horn and do crazy stuff and eventually it came out and we got fuel. So we hit the kangaroo. Then we had to get fuel in this really dodgy place and there's people walking around like late, late at night just looking like predators like they're Still out there your stuff. Uh, stalking. So we were kind of on high alert, got fuel and then we kept going. Anyway, um, this was at the end of the second night coming into the afternoon. We're traveling down to Nullarbor. We'd just gone through... A place called Balladonia. Now, I think Balladon. I think Balladonia is in South Australia. I think I might be wrong. I but anyway, know. we're heading to Eucla, which was two hundred kilometres away. So, if you don't fuel up at Balladonia, and the signs all say, you know, no fuel for two hundred forty nine kilometres or something like that. So, you've got to fuel up. So, we fueled up. Anyway, we're going down this hill, and it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. And we're going down Nullarbor, and it is, it's great to do once. I've done it three times, and I tell you, the third time is just far too many times. Yeah. And it's just nothing. We're driving down. I was driving. Dirt. No, 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 no. It was Bitumen Road. Oh, okay. I was driving down, and just, you know, those long downs, and then there's long ups, and you get to the top of the up, and you hope that you look out, and you can see, see the end in sight. On the Nullarbor, you go long down, you go long up, and you get over the up and you see another long <laughs> down. You get a long up and you're hoping that you can see the right nut. You see another long down. It's just so tedious and it's really straight. Anyway, we're going down the hill and bang, explosion. The back left corner tyre exploded wow. off the rim. So it's like the, the station wagon's going fishy tail down down the Nullarbor and I pull off down at the bottom of the I just kept driving until we got to the, the flat yeah. because you can't change a tire on the hill Yeah. so then it took us ages we had to unpack the whole car because the spare wheel was at the bottom of the tray Yeah. so you got to lift up the bottom tray get the spare tire out swap it all over and the sun's going down now and we pack it all back in really st strategically because we, it took us hours to pack it nicely. And now we're doing it on the side of the road and yeah. it's getting dark and we didn't have lights and there yeah. was no mobile phones. And so oh. you didn't have a torch on your phone and, you know, all this stuff. Yeah, it's 1989. Yeah. In the Perth skyline. Yeah. Right. 
So we pack everything in and we drive off. Literally drove 400 metres down the road. Bang, the spare tyre goes. Oh. Exactly the same. And literally just wire and some tyre left, like the steel belt. Yeah. And some tyre left on the rim. That was it on both both wheels. So we thought, oh, shit, what do we do now? So we parked, we were parked on the side of the road and had, you know, the Nullarbor, at least that section, they had a very s- wide side strip thing. So you park way off. Um, so Stephen and uh, seeing Michael hitchhiked back to Balladonia mm. to go get the tyre fixed because we knew that, we knew what was back at Balladonia, yeah. which was a garage yep. with a service, you know, mechanics and stuff. And it was quite early. It was like five, six o'clock in the evening and we knew it would still be open, but we didn't know how far to go to Euclid because no GPS, so we didn't know exactly where we were. So we went back that way. Anyway, so there was just seeing Adam Morris, who was the youngest out of everyone and myself, on the side of the Nullable. And we had one packet of Tim Tams. (laughs) That was all the food that we had. Like there was nothing else. No water. Can you believe that? Yeah. How crazy is that? Yeah. We had no water. We had they'd had Coke or whatever, soft drinks, all finished. We had one packet of Tim Tams between us three guys. Jeez. And uh, to kind of occupy the time, I was we were training on the middle of another bore. I did Yulus, the, the, old, the, the old frame Yulus and another bore. We lay down on the white, the double white lines, you know, do crazy stuff. We ended up, we ended up sitting on the bonnet and leaning up against the windscreen of the car. And Morris said, oh, I need to go to the toilet. And was, it's pitch black. Yeah. Like it is dark out there. Yeah. And we said, well, you know, was that number ones or number twos? And he's, he's, a, he's underage, so we're kind of concerned. Yeah. And he says, no, I've got I've to do number two. And we said, okay, well, here's a roll of toilet paper. you just got to go in the bush because we don't even have anything to dig a hole. Yeah. Right? We were totally unprepared. So he goes into the bush and we're talking to him all the way and he's yelling out to us so that we knew where he was. Because like Mrs. Castorino, I remember her saying to me, she says, Sifu, you look after my mortars. <laughs> Isn't my baby? And I said, yes, Mrs. Castorino, of course I will. She said, no, no. She, you know, she was like crying and everything. Her little baby's leaving yep. Brisbane on this adventure with four other guys. Yeah. They've never been to Perth. They don't even have a forwarding address. Like, we oh. didn't even have anywhere to check into. Just, right? Just take, take the bet. Got in the car and drove. Anyway, he comes yelling, screaming, running out. And he said, there's this big black pig looking thing <laughs> chasing him. <laughs> so we thought it was a wild boar, but well, none of us saw it. But he said it was huge and he could hear the rustling and then it stopped. <laughs> So as he ran out, we could hear, thrum, 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 you know, and all through the shrubbery and stuff like that, chasing him. Yeah, so that we kind of had a laugh at that because he was all right. But then we noticed after we finished the Tim Tams, we're getting bored and yep. a little bit restless. So we started looking up and no kidding, we think we saw a UFO. Right. Like there's this, we could see what planes were because they flash and they travel very slowly and yeah. they're constant. Yeah. And we could see satellites because they didn't flash, but they were just constant. Yeah. And they moved quite quickly. Yeah. Satellites do. But this particular thing that we, seeing Adam and I, swear was a UFO. Yeah. Like flying saucer UFO, not yes. unidentified flying object. Sure, it was a UFO, but I mean like from outer space. What are you talking about, mate? UFOs. Yes. Well, how could it be a UFO, but like like UFO? <laughs> like, like. A UFO. <laughs> because, do you know what UFO stands for? I know what a UFO stands for. What does it stand for? Unidentified flying object. Oh, okay. Lucky. Yeah, lucky. So, this this UFO went across the sky, stopped, and went 90 degrees, stopped, and then went back at an angle, stopped, and then disappeared. Oh. Like it flew away from us. Time warp. It was like, whoa, we couldn't believe it. This, this you know, it didn't just travel across the sky yeah. and actually made turns and sharp turns and then disappeared. Mm. And we thought, wow, that's freaky. So we saw our first UFO and then um, seeing Michael and seeing Steve ended up coming back at about 
2 in the morning, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, they, they hopped out of this, like, um, flower van, you know, the <laughs> vans where people paint all over and... Yeah, sort Scooby-Doo. Of Scooby, like, yeah, Scooby-Doo hippie-like van. And um, they brought us three rounds of sandwiches. Nice. Like, we haven't eaten since lunch. Yeah. And this is now 2 a.m. Yeah. We had a packet of Tim Tams. And they, they said, oh, we said, what, what happened? What took, took so long? Oh, well, we've got the tyre fixed and then we had to have a hot dinner and then we're watching <laughs> the news. We had a f- couple of coffees and no one was going to take us back because we're two single men. So we just had to wait until someone would take us back. So, you know, we got you some sandwiches. I said, mm, we're, we're like, awesome. Yeah. They have, a, they have a shower and everything as well? No, no, <laughs> no shower. But they, they, they had a good time. Um, so we were actually, we were smack bang in the middle. We were 110 Ks from Baladonia and 100 Ks to Eucla. Uh, That's where we were. Yeah, cool. Pretty much right in the middle. So then we went to Eucla. Good times. Yep. We stayed in Eucla. Um, we went to Eucla. Um, we stayed overnight there and then we drove Mm. from there. Because we were exhausted, and that's when we came into Perth, and those those are the signs we're looking for. Yeah, we drove into Perth looking for, you know, like big tourist signs saying "Welcome to Perth." Uh, no big buildings, no tourist signs. No, nothing. Yeah, we we had to go back along Great Eastern Highway because we came in through Great Eastern Highway. Yeah, and found that sign opposite the casino, which used to be called Burswood. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. All right, so the next section, we're going to talk about some video content taken from class and yep. get a deep, deep dive into these and um, yeah, see what we think. Okay. So this one I've, I've dubbed pain plus reflection equals progress. Mm-hmm. Um, taken from a morning class, mm-hmm. I believe maybe last week. Okay. And yeah, let's have a listen and cool. see how we go. All right. See you, mate. I don't feel in my body today. I just... Mm. I just feel drained. Mm. I just feel like spent. Yeah. But um, it sort of feels like I'm picking a bit more up in the, in the new loop. So, mm. But I definitely, uh, yeah, just going through the motions. Wanna, yeah. Want to get into my body, but it's not happening. Mm. When you feel spent, what? Where do you? Where are you? You think? Just drifting. In in terms of, yeah, not connected. Yep. In my head. Yep. In your head. Mm. Good. Good noticing. Uh, formula pain plus reflection equals progress. Pain plus reflection equals progress. We often get attached to progress being I've got something new that I've learnt that is different to the previous skills that I've got. But in actual fact, I'm listening to all of you, you're all progressing, even though it may seem as though You've, you're still doing the same stuff. The fact that you train hard and consistently, that's the pain. So you must put effort in. That's the investment. The reflection is the second half of the investment. So I actually have to look at how does all this feel to me now that I've done the pain and notice differences. Can, can you hear that every single one of us here are talking about differences. We're not talking about attainment. We're not talking about where we were once here and we're now there. We're talking about there's a difference that I'm noticing and that's the progress. And the more often we do that, the more often we do that, then the natural progression is we do step forward, right? And it becomes, it becomes a, 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 an instinct that that's how I treat myself. I treat myself by, I commit to something and I invest in it. And when I'm doing it, I'm reflecting about how all this is to me. What's, what's different? Not am I better than I was before, not am, how am I compared to others, but is it, how is it different? And that gives us clarity. That's the progress, when there's clarity. I keep thinking to myself, oh, so, week 92 this week and I keep thinking to myself why is it that fear and sadness is so high in me 
yet I don't feel any different. Like my expectation is that if I'm sad and scared, I should be debilitated. I shouldn't be able to operate. That's, that's my, my expectation, right? And we all have it, don't we? We all, we all have this experience that when a person is anything but happy, then more than likely they're not doing very well. And that should equate to things aren't happening the way they normally would when they're not under the, the, the fear and the sadness or even anger, for example. Right. So I question it too because I'm just like you guys. Same, same. No different. And I, I'm, a, I'm influenced by everything around me. And I wonder, why is it I'm so clear? Like, I, I don't really get it. I, don't, I should be all foggy and I should be lost and I should be um, feeling heavy and um, uninspired to step forward and do the things that I do every day. But in actual fact, nothing has changed. And the only thing I can put it down to is my daily practice. That that in itself gives me clarity. So whatever feeling I have doesn't affect my, uh, my um, ability to produce. It just clarifies. Pain plus reflection equals progress. So I see that as that statement, pain plus reflection equals progress, a, a real um, description of daily practice. As long as I am doing that, I'm already progressing. Does that make sense? All right, so that was pain plus reflection equals progress, a mm. formula that we haven't talked about in a while. I remember, I think our first episode is called pain plus reflection equals progress. First really? episode of the podcast. Then. Really? Yeah. So I haven't talked about it in, what, lots of episodes. I can't even think on top of my head. But, yeah. What do you reckon? Deep dive a little bit more on the, this topic. I personally um, can identify with uh, to having to achieve more and attain more, um, be seen to be learning more, to be getting better. Um, that there, there is not a lot of support in my upbringing, at least. I'll, I'll speak from my perspective. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, ah, pain in the heart. <laughs> Um, not a lot of support in my upbringing around reflection and uh, the value of progress and how that actually happens. So it's, I think it's a pretty normal thing that we, when, when we are getting better at something, we should be going faster or, or deeper, bigger, longer, whatever. Um, lift more weights run 100 meters quicker all that stuff um and then that reflects kind of that influences the rest of our lives uh, like what the suburb you live in the house you live in the cars you drive and the clothes you wear and the type of holidays you go on and what you do with disposable income and all that sort of stuff and um what happens is i find that we get into this rut when it comes to our training and our practice the study of our Kung Fu or Tai Chi, that if I'm always looking for something new, then the new thing too easily becomes a distraction and I miss out on all the lessons learnt in the now. And I know lots of people talk about now and it's used often as like a like a pop culture phrase, being in the now. Um, for me, I'm not referring to it in that sense. I'm referring to it in the sense of because I'm so uh, focused on learning the, the whole drill or the new combination every lesson I come in and we often hear it with the kids they, they do something once and they know it I said I've done it I know it and they're not prepared to sit and do it ten times um, and what I find is that we miss it we miss a whole lot so sure there is there is uh, a place for learning new stuff and what we say to everyone who's learning the ELU is don't get bogged down in the detail get through the first 13 get to understand what the principles are once you've done it and you can do the first 13 by yourself 
move on. Move on. L- learn the rest of the ilu. Don't get bogged in the detail because what happens is we end up getting distracted by detail. So it's finding that balance of I'm not just learning for the sake of learning and forgetting what was before or staying in the before because I'm not good enough to go forward. It's actually finding a nice balance of I can I will go forward when I can remember this stuff and I've got to just go forward to a point where I can just forget that's where I should be. So so that I am like turning every push into a pull. I'm pulling myself through this learning process and seeing it from a big picture. And then once we've learnt the whole yilu, we go back and we dissect and f- find all of those principles mm. that are uh, relative to the movements, etc. There's always way more to dissect anyway. Always. Yeah. Yeah, always. There's no such thing as do it a few times and you know it. It's always something a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm still uh, week 93. I think I'm 15,000 plus yulus now. And every time I do it, I find there's stuff that I'm missing. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I have omitted certain principles and I listen to some of the videos of Master Chen and then I go, ah, oh, that's right. I forgot about doing that. Yeah. And then go back and yeah. add that in. Yeah. So there's no such thing as knowing at all. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's a matter of um, theory, practice, grind. Mm. Just keep moving through it, yeah. being aware of the theory, keep practicing it. It's complex and it hurts when you practice. Yeah. I find just now with being in this space of practice, I enjoy doing one thing multiple times more yeah. and I find it challenging to do new stuff yeah because I just want to like practice this and notice how it feels in my body because every day is different Mm. and just practice that until a period of time where all right I've got this and Mm. then take that and go to the next thing Mm. Uh, and I've kind of developed a a way for myself to kind of like bookmark or chapter certain bits so Mm. like the yearly when I learnt it I learnt it by single whip to single whip Mm. so that I knew how far I need to go, how far I've gone, and just practice that a few times. I've got it. All right, next single whip, and then just make sure I remember the bits before. Mm. And then by the time I, I knew it, I was down with the Yilu. Mm. And then that's how I remembered the Yilu as well. When I did know it all and Master Chen wasn't here and we were learning mm. on our own in Perth, mm. it's just like, all right, did I do that single whip? And it's, it was a bookmark and a chapter mm. for me to keep practicing. Mm. So I like to do that when I'm learning new things. Yeah. Chapter things, take note of how it feels and stuff like that mm. and where I am. Yep. Yeah. Good. Nothing else? No. You bored? No. <laughs> there's, there's no. <laughs> Nothing else to go. <laughs> Are you bored? Are you bored, mate? Yeah. All right. Well, this one is a continuation. Same day. Mm. Same income. Same <laughs> super <contract. laughs> Um... But uh, it's called Be Do Have. Okay. All right. It's called Be Do Have. So so it's the doing. It's the essence of what you're saying. Is that that's what I'm making a mean. It's the doing. Obviously, the formula is is part of that. But if you're not doing, you can't apply the formula. You can't. You can't just think about it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. There has to be like Be Do Have. Those three. I do lots of things in threes. Obviously, simple guy. Be Do Have. The being comes first. So. I don't know whether you've heard me tell this story before, but um, I'm sure you can all relate to this. We all want to aspire to greatness. We all have different types of greatness. We all have different things that we call greatness, but we all aspire to greatness. We want to be better. So, you know, we're taught that at a very early age, particularly at school. You get high grades, then you get accolades. You get accolades and high grades. You get an invitation to go somewhere to study more, to get a this so that you go out and you can start doing something else and get paid more and you know so there's all of this progression which is i'm not saying it's bad i'm just saying that that's there so like you i also thought well let's reverse engineer that i'll be smart about this i want to be a wealthy person all right what does wealth mean when i was when 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 we were growing up a million bucks was a lot of money 
right? Now, we're, now a million bucks is not that much money, right? But a million bucks. Like it, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I wouldn't say no to it, exactly. So I would reverse engineer and think about, well, if I want to go there, what are the steps I have to do in order to get myself there? That's all the doing. So what can I do in order to have? And then I can be free. Interesting, isn't it? Right? So that order of events. What can I have? Good. So what do I have to do to get that in order to be free? So it's the do, have, be. Doesn't work. Short story, be, do, have is the only way to make it work. Who am I being? In other words, being present to myself, being clear about who I am as an essence, as a human. Like, what do I value? What is important to me? If you want to be free, then be free now. How do you look being free? I'm not talking about what job you do. Freedom is on the inside, it's not an outside thing. Freedom is not what we wear. Freedom is what's on the inside. So if freedom is what you want, then be free. How do I be free? Well, be me to start with. Who's me? Well, we ask it every day. How are you feeling right now? Mad, sad, glad, scared. That's it. So be. Then do what it is that fits who you're being. So, you know, when we lose our shit and we're being assholes, which we all do, I do as well, the question is, is that the only part of me? Well, no. Do I really want to be an asshole? Well, no. Okay, so what else is there? So I keep digging deeper to figure out why it is that I'm being an asshole. Oh, I'm actually just a scared little boy who wants to be loved, that's it. And I feel like no one loves me right now. That's why I'm lashing out and trying to smack everybody about to say, come on, why is it you're not loving me? Okay, so if I'm a scared little boy who just wants to be loved, be him. Oh, so what fits that? Well, just tell you the truth. Just tell people how hurt you feel and how much you love them and how important the relationship is and talk it through. That's doing who I'm being. And then naturally I'll have the end result. But if we do it in any other order, we get nothing but chaos. Nothing but chaos. Conflict, chaos, shit. And we'll bounce, we will bounce from situation to situation doing the same stuff having the same experience, just different place, different people, same shit. Because if we do it in any other, other order, other than be, do, have, that's what we're gonna get. Because we're human beings, we're not human doings. So I just want to clarify that first. So we've got to know the be. That's why every time we meet, I ask you, how are you feeling? Every time I do a post on Facebook, I will share and ask you, how are you feeling? Every time we meet on the Daily Practice Project, we reflect on how we are feeling. Because mind, body, spirit, spirit is the emotional self. Start with the emotion, clarify that. Clarify the one third of you. How are you feeling? Then we get on to the, what are you thinking and what are you doing? Once we get all those three, we're present, we are being, that's it, that's it. Then we go out and do shit, knowing exactly who we're being. All right, I should have called that one be free. <laughs> Said that too many times, but be that's free. a good formula though for, uh, I guess you're talking about life, but you know, having that awareness for yourself to kind of, I know I fall into that pattern of, I should have, I need, all that stuff so how can i get there and then do stuff that doesn't represent who i am sort of thing mm. yeah well first thing i want to say is that i didn't come up with that phrase back when your mum and i first got divorced 
I did a whole lot of reflection, made a lot of life changes, read my first book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, try to work out why it is that this didn't work. Because no one goes into marriage thinking they're going to leave it. And well, that's um, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me yeah, too. That's good. Yeah. And um, so I, 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 a wise woman told me that. A wise woman who uh, was supporting me to make change, uh, a therapist in her own right, uh, not quite a regular therapist, but she was a, she was a therapist and also worked with businesses and so on. And um, actually, both your mother and I worked with her for some time. And eventually, I heard that phrase, and it made a lot of sense, but I couldn't do it. Mm. I just could not do it. It was it made sense, but it takes a lot. Yeah, I'm going to swing this around to you because I reckon you have a equally uh, an, an equally no, I'm not saying important, uh, equally uh, relative story around this because you know you're 24. Um, your whole life is before you you're a young man with a very clear vision but you had to think about this too even without the words like you did this yourself i don't think i was saying to you son you should do this yeah or whatever um i let let you be yeah to be free be <laughs> <laughs> to do whatever you want to do yeah what's it like for you because you left school and there's a whole lot of pressure for you to go to uni and you got yourself yeah. into uni and rah, rah, rah. What, yeah what about you um yeah i guess after school well school was a blurry time it was a blurry time so but i do remember like 11 and 12 out of all the years because just i guess i was close to adulthood or something like that i was more developed um yeah it was it was pressuresome with that you had to pick pretty much from year 10 your um your courses or your um, subjects that will lead into university and that will lead to this and it will lead to that and you get this and you know that was quite pressuresome where I I guess I was following the system because I didn't didn't know what else to do I was in, I was in high school and it wasn't there wasn't anything that I really wanted to do which we know that now but it was like all right I'll, I'll do this because it kind of feels good it feels right, kind of feels like, like I did phys ed studies where it was, you know, um, biomechanics and all that stuff to do with the human body. Um, that was relatively maybe close to Kung Fu, that movement of body. Um, went to work and stuff. Like I've told this story many times on the podcast, but I, yeah, I noticed, felt like I took a long time, but it, I noticed what was what was me being me and first it wasn't to go to uni because I didn't feel like it I literally just didn't feel like it wasn't in the space to go back into books and sitting down all day and all that stuff so I thought that didn't appeal to me but got into ECU with um, with your help and Marianne's help and um, I got a few letters of commendation from people and stuff like that Com commendation reference character reference maybe? character Something? reference yeah mm. so I got into ECU um, and then I was like, no, I'll just defer that for a year. Thought going to work straight away would be a good idea just to earn some money and get that experience, which was, I think, which is quite good because I did get that experience and knowing that what I like and what I don't like with the retail world. Um, and then went to the driving parts, driving all day, noticing how that felt to my body. Um, and I'm like leading up to this day is that I'm always trying to choose what's best for me, what feels right in order for me to be me and not chase the dollar sign. Because I think coming out of school, that's what I did early on, chase the dollar sign because it turned up in the bank and made me look like I had lots of money. Um, well, you did. You could buy stuff. Yeah. Well, I could. But you couldn't before. Sure. Yeah. So there's a real freedom in that. Yeah. But th that didn't... It's real cliche, but that didn't make me happy. Mm. It's a different type of freedom. Different type, yeah. Different type of being free. Um, I don't know is that kind of what you're prompting? Yeah, well, because you you 
so a regu- a, so the the regular the stereotypical vast majority outlook is you go to school, you get good grades, you get a good job. Yeah. Um, and school could look like high school, could look like TAFE afterwards, could look like uni, but you get good grades to get some, a qualification that then gives you a ticket to get into getting a job yeah. and you work your way up and you go, might go sideways and change a little bit, but yeah. um, you know, you, you earn more money, you buy more stuff mm. and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Like we don't really talk about in school about be do have. We, we don't talk about, well, I don't know now, now like right now, maybe we'll hear from Isabella what, what yeah. she's going to be hearing about. Yeah. But when I went through school, there was never any talk about, well, what positive contribution can you make to society, yep. to mankind, to humankind? Um, what are the things that you're doing right now that are harmful to yeah. humankind? Um, you know, how do you value money? There was only just about getting more of it. And yep. I went to one of these prestigious boys' schools in Brisbane, and it was certainly, you know, not bagging it at all. Um, wonderful school, but there was never any talk about anything other than higher grades means uni, which means degree, which means high-paying job, which means Mercedes-Benz house in a certain suburb brings kids back to this school. Yeah. And then the whole cycle goes again. And yeah. Then, you know, and so they're feeding everyone back into the school cycle to be, you know, old boys bring their kids back and stuff. And, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I, all I'm saying is there was no, there was no conscious contribution around, say, these three words: be, do, have. Like, we we we're, we're taught about um, career choices, mm. but not life choices. That's yeah. very different. Uh, yeah, I was going to say no, like humanness. It was yeah, it was yeah, well, exactly. It was all about that a. What are you doing as yeah. opposed to who are you being? Yeah. So the the doing is what is your career choice. And it, you would have had more pressure, I, I suspect, and I'm I'm not saying I was hands off with with how you grew up as a young man, but I I had to work at not um, interfering. Mm. I had to let you um, be and go out and do the things you want to do to yeah. work it out for yourself. Yeah. But the, all the pressure that is around is is about attaining more. Mm. So you move from job to job, not not just because you might be treated poorly or the conditions are poor, but you also go because you want more pay, mm. and the more pay equates to something better, more luxuries, yeah. and so on. So there, there's very there was there was more pressure, I'd imagine, for you in your your friendship groups, mm. um, to to be to have an interest in that as opposed to you know, what really makes you happy. Yeah. And how are you going to live doing what makes you happy when you've got bills to pay because happiness doesn't keep the lights on. Mm. Exactly. So, you know, for me, be, do, have, is, and everyone will probably see the merit in it, but it, it certainly comes with challenges. Oh, yeah, it's not easy. No. No. And when I first heard it, it was I made it mean that it was... I saw it as being, it was sold as being a formula for success. Yeah. Be, do, have. Yeah. And that if you get this right, then um, abundance just flows your way. And if you're not careful, you drown in it. <laughs> clearly, I... Woo! Yeah, <laughs> clearly, I failed as a student of that learning because, yeah. um, you know, if we're talking about a, a abundance financially, I'm not, it, I'm not drowning in it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, you know, like it's, it's there and I advocate for it. Be, do, have, um, but like it's, it's bring it's it back to a practice though. That's mm. how we get more aware of it, isn't it? It is hard, but being aware of how we are as a person. Absolutely. Gets us closer on the line. Well, f- from a practice perspective, what I see is that being is being aware of my mind, body, and spirit at that moment. Yeah. So when I am aware of my emotional, my mental, my physical state, I am present. So then when I go and do that, Kung Fu or Tai Chi, whilst being present, I get the best results, the fastest results, 
the most direct straight line to the the intended results from that practice. Yep. So if it's gao choi, if I am totally present when I do 10,000 gao choi's, I will have that perfect gao choi. Mm. If I'm not present to myself and I do 10,000 gao choi's, I will not be anywhere near that point because I didn't follow the the formula. Yep. And you know, having the perfect gao choi, that's you know, for just for na- for the sake of naming something, just comes. You can't stop it from happening. Yeah. Like as the principle of the ten thousand yulu says, that your body changes. You can't stop that. It yep. just happens. You do ten thousand consecutive yulus c- correctly. And this is what you get fully. That's what you get. Yeah. You you can't do anything else. But to do that, I believe there's a step before. You've got to work out who you're being at that point. Yeah. You can't just mindlessly do it. You actually have to be present when you're doing it. Yeah. So and that's the be do have. Yeah. So from a practice perspective, thanks for pulling us back into that direction. Yeah. From a practice <laughs> perspective, that's what it is. Yeah. See, I mean, there, there's an example, right, of what we started off with when I say the pressure of the reflection of Christmas and New Year. Yeah. And where you kind of work out whether you've done well over the last year. See how how discreet that creeped up on me yes that was incredible <laughs> like, well tippy to give you an example today yeah um i was a bit behind on the podcast set up and organizing for this episode yeah um and i was really i woke up really off center this morning yeah mind body spirit just all over the place yeah <laughs> um bad aim yeah mm. i got i got home this morning yeah in my car I sat because I was just feeling so distracted on the drive as well. Like I was, I wasn't there. I was autopilot. Ooh. So I sat down, stayed in the car for a moment, and posted on the daily practice group. And what that had me do was actually reflect on how I was feeling. Once I did that, then I noticed straight away that I was actually really hungry. So mm. I haven't eaten yet. Mm. So then I said to myself, "All right, when we go inside, we're going to eat." When we go inside, yeah. you said to yourself, "Yeah, when we we're, go inside, we're going to go eat." That's interesting. We're going to eat, have a coffee, and go from there. But the mind before that on the drive home was, like, "I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to organize a podcast. I've got to edit this, and and all these things are on my list." That was so overwhelming because my body and my mind were so tired. Plus that pressure, sending me floating about. Mm. So I got home put on the kettle and all that stuff and then i noticed that whilst i like you know put on the kettle and it let it boil i was like, oh i could fit this this section in of my list i can just fit this in and i'll fit that in and then when the kettle boils i can eat and then once i eat i can watch this so i can prepare for the and just put that myself back in that cycle mm. and that was making me do that thing again the floaty thing mm. so using the practice mm. without actually practicing mm. I was going what do I what do I need right now mm. what am I being right now mm. I'm being distracted I'm being all that stuff that wasn't feeling great mm. um, and pulled it back I said alright no boil the kettle and just stood there mm. watch the water boil watch the water boil because that's all I needed to do mm. to just just focus on one thing mm. and be mm. eat do mm. and then I'll have a satisfied body, <laughs> you know, <laughs> True, and yeah. then I was ready for my yeah. next thing. So yeah, I yeah. then did step two, yeah. then I did step three, and then I actually prepared the podcast in a shorter amount of time mm. than I would normally in a great amount of time and distract myself in between. Mm. So I was just putting that practice in mm. of actually noticing how I'm feeling, how am I being, and instead of spreading myself thin, mm. it was just putting all of me in, in one thing at a time. And it all took less time than it usually does. Cool. Well, you should um, you should do a little post in on the couch for that, with okay. for the daddy pay because I think it'll take more than two minutes to explain all that. Yes, that's really cool. Mm. That's really cool. That's like li- literally putting your daily practice into everyday life, mm. and it was just the morning. Just yeah, it was just, just the morning. It feels like a burst. Yeah, out of all that. Mm. That's really cool. Mm. 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 Excellent. All right. Well, I got a third video, but we'll okay. save that for the next podcast. All right. Because we're running out of time. Okay. Excuse me. Bad burp. Um. So before we end, I do have one quote that I pulled yep. out of all my organization, but I feel like it's a great one that reflects our practice. Mm. Are you ready mm. for it? Mm. Okay. Life is ten percent what happens to you, 
ninety percent is how you react to it. <laughs> <laughs> how much time do you spend on finding these quotes? It's like you must be quote searching Quoted all out. day. That's um, really cool. I've I've actually made my quota. Ah, uh, uh, very good. Yeah, my quota. Uh, <laughs> anyway, what do you reckon about this one? Say it again. Oh come <laughs> on, man. Life is ten percent. Ten percent of what happens to you. Ninety percent is how you react to it. Yeah. Okay. React to it. React. <laughs> react <laughs> to it. You sound so Asian sometimes. Uh, what do you reckon? That's really cool. I get it. Can you I see get. how that relates to practice? It does. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like the only thing we can control is our response to things. Mm. We, we actually we can control like. Nothing. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> no, what else can you control? Yeah. There's nothing else. Well, that's like, you know, me this morning. I just had yeah. to control me and then everything else played out to what, what yeah. it did. Yeah. That's awesome, man. All right, cool. Very cool. Well, that, that brings us to the end of the podcast then. Mm. Anything else to add? Yes. Oh. Uh, Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Two things. Go on. We have a very special event that we're participating in this Saturday. And by the time people hear about this uh, Be too late. Prod- yeah, <laughs> this podcast, <laughs> um, the event would have happened. Oh, so it was a great event. It, it was, was so good. It was awesome, Great wasn't it? success and <laughs> sunny day and so good. Yeah, so good. Anyway. So I guess they'll see it uh, on Instagram. Can I explain it quickly anyway? Yes, yes. So uh, Chen Shou Huang's nephew uh, from Chen Village is coming, uh, another Master Chen. Uh, is coming to Perth and are doing a public performance on Saturday and a series of workshops for the next two or three days afterwards. And uh, we were invited by the organisers to come along and be part of the opening ceremony and performance launching the event. Yeah, cool. Happen Saturday at Hyde Park. So we'll get the photos up. Yeah. The, the pop photos will be up before this goes through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, exactly. if you're listening and you want to check it out, go back to our Jingmo Academy Facebook page and mm. through real Instagram. So who who's that? The Grandmaster, is it? So, no. So, Chen Xiu Huang is like uh, the the head, the number one person of Chen Tai Chi okay. from Chen Village. And his brother and uh, uh, teachers and his brother's son, who's his nephew, mm. teaches also. Um, I believe also is... Uh, uh, several times over national Tai Chi champion mm. is coming to Perth, and Perth is high on the list of places to visit in the world for Chinese tourists. Mm. So it's really cool. Yeah, cool. All right, and we get to perform. Yes, with them. Exciting. It is exciting. All right, very good then. Oh, there was something else. Oh, what was it? I just want to say that I'm really proud of you. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, Dad. Mm. Thanks. I have. I am blessed with beautiful children, and you are the first one to arrive. What can I say? Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, that brings us to the end. You can see more for real content on our Instagram at for real official, and on our YouTube channel at for real TV, where of course you can watch this full episode and check out our facial expressions and everything like that. And <laughs> <laughs> with your eyes open or not? Yes. Uh, whilst you're listening, if you have any questions or wonderings, you can send them through to our email address, of course, forreal at jingmo.com.au, F-U-R-E-L at G-I-N-G-M-O dot com dot A-U. Once again, thanks for tuning in in this episode, and we'll see you in the next one. Cool. See ya. Bye. Booyah!